Hey everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be exploring an example of combined loading. So given to us, we're being asked to draw the shear stress distribution across the x-axis and compute the shear stress at point A. So here we have a circular cross-section that has a four inch diameter. The x-axis is the horizontal axis passing right through the center of the circle. The point A is on the left edge of the circle and the circular section is subjected to an applied torque moment of 20 pound feet and an applied shear force of 150 pounds. So let's get started. Under solution, we first need to notice that the shear stress developed along the x-axis is going to be due to two things, the torque moment and the shear force. So we need to remember that the torsional shear stress due to an applied torque moment is going to be equal to TR over J, and the torsional shear stress due to a shear force is going to be equal to VQ over IT. Now, I put some subscripts here just to distinguish the two shear stresses from one another. So tau sub t is the torsional shear stress and tau sub v is the beam shear stress. Now, one other thing to notice is in the beam shear stress formula, the moment of inertia value in the denominator is going to be the i sub x value for this problem because we see that the applied shear force is perpendicular to the x-axis. So we're going to be looking at i sub x x for this particular example. Now let's go ahead and check off some of the values that we already know. We know t, we know that r is 2 inches, so I'm going to check that off. We know that the applied shear force is 150 pounds, and we actually already know what little t is in the denominator of tau sub v. T, little t, is the thickness of the member where you want to calculate the beam shear stress. In this case, since we are interested in the beam shear stress along the x-axis, which goes through the center of the cross section, the thickness T is gonna be equal to the entire diameter of four inches. So all that leaves us to do is calculate these remaining section properties. So we need the polar moment of inertia J to use in our torsional shear stress formula. And then for our beam shear stress formula, we need the first area moment Q and we need the moment of inertia about the x-axis I sub x. So let's go ahead and calculate these values. The polar moment of inertia for a solid circular section is going to be pi times d to the fourth over 32. Punching in those values, you're going to get 25.13 inches to the fourth. So we can go ahead and check off the J value now. The uh, moment of inertia about the horizontal x-axis for a circular shape, a circular section, is going to be equal to pi d to the fourth over 64. If you punch this in, you're going to get a value of 12.56 inches to the fourth. So we can check that one off now as well. Last, we need this q value in vq over it. So how are we going to get that? Well, we need to remember that q equals a prime times y bar prime. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and redraw this circular cross section and I'm going to make note of the thickness t that we're interested in right here. That's the full diameter. And if you remember, the a prime value is going to be the area either below or above where the thickness t is measured. So I'm going to shade in this top half area and I'm going to call that my a prime. And then y prime bar is the perpendicular distance measured from the overall centroid of the entire shape to the centroid of a prime. So my y prime bar value is shown right here. It's measured from the center of that circle to the centroid of this half circle, which is given uh, defining our area a prime. Okay. So from you know pretty much any statics book or mechanics and materials book, you can get the formula for y prime bar and that is going to equal 4 times the radius divided by 3 times pi. So if you punch that through, you should get 0 0.849 inches. And then A prime is going to be the area of half of a circle. So, you know, you can say that that's pi d squared over 4, and then you divide all that by 2. If you punch that in, you should get 6.28 
square inches. So now we have all of the pieces that we need to calculate both of these two different kinds of shear stresses. Let's go ahead and do that now. So we're gonna get the torsional shear stress, tau sub t, is equal to t r over j. Substituting my values in, and, and you need to do this with me, you know, this is not a spectator sport, you need to get your calculator out and punch this through with me, but we're gonna have 20 pound feet we need to convert that to inches, pound inches. So we're gonna say times 12 inches per foot. And then we're gonna say times the two inch radius. And then all divided by that polar moment of inertia, 25.13 inches to the fourth. And we're gonna get 19.1 PSI, or that's pounds per square inch. Next, we're gonna get tau sub V. That's VQ over IT and that's I sub X times T. And so that's gonna give us 150 pounds times Q, which is A prime times Y prime bar. So that's gonna be 6.28 square inches times 0 0.849 inches, all divided by IT. So that's divided by 12.56 inches to the fourth times four inches. And that gives us a value of 15.9 PSI. So let's go ahead and draw this out. That's part of what the problem asked us to do was to draw the shear stress distribution across that x-axis. So the first thing I'm going to draw is uh, a cross section. Um, and I'm going to draw my horizontal x-axis here. And this, the first, the first stress distribution I'm going to draw is the shear stress distribution due to the torque moment T being applied here. So if you remember uh, from your previous knowledge, torsional shear stress goes through a point of zero stress at the center, and then it linearly increases to a maximum value at the outer edges. So this is going to look something like this. And so our maximum values are going to be equal to 19.1 PSI and 19.1 uh, PSI in the opposite direction on the opposite side of the um, of the diameter. And this is a linear stress distribution with a value of zero right in the middle. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is draw the section again. And I'm going to draw, let me see if I could draw that a little bit better for us, but we're going to draw on here the shear stress distribution due to that shear force V. So I'm going to kind of dash that in here, V, okay? Now, the shear force V is going to cause a uniform shear stress distribution across the thickness T, okay? And this uniform stress distribution is going to be equal to the 15.9 PSI, okay? Now, what we're going to do is use superposition and add these together. So I'm going to put a big plus sign here, and I'm going to add the effects of these two together and draw a final figure that shows how these, um, how these superimposed stress distributions look. So I'm going to say this is going to equal, draw a big equal sign here, and I'm going to draw a final circular section here. And again, I'm going to put my my x-axis here. And what we're going to do is simply add these values together and plot them on this new cross section. So at the left edge, we're going to have 19.1 PSI plus 15.9 PSI. And that's going to give us 35 PSI pointing downwards. Now, what about on the right edge? What about on the opposite edge? We're going to have 19.1 PSI pointing in the opposite direction as the 15.9 PSI. So they're going to have to have a difference in sign, right? You're going to have to call one of them a positive and one of them a negative. So I'm going to count, I'm going to call the 19.1 positive and the 15.9 negative because they are pointing in opposite directions. And so what I'm going to end up having is a 3.2 PSI value at the right edge. And then the magnitudes of these of these two uh, 
kind of vector ends is going to be linearly related. So I'm going to have this unsymmetrical shear stress distribution just like this. And this larger triangular distribution is going to be pointed down or shown as pointing down. And this smaller triangular stress distribution is going to be shown pointing up. And there's going to be a point of zero right here. Now, we could take it one step further and we could um, actually calculate the distance uh, between the edge, between each of these um, opposite edges and where the center, um, where, where the stress is zero, somewhere in the middle of the cross section. It's actually in the middle. It's closer to the right edge. We could do that by using similar triangles because, again, we've got two triangles here. We've got a large triangle on the left side and a smaller right triangle on the right side. But the problem didn't really ask for that. But just so you know, you could do that. Um, the problem also asked for the shear stress value at point A. You can clearly see that at point A, the shear stress value is that 35 PSI. So I can say tau, and that's gonna be the overall tau value at point A is 35 PSI. And clearly that was from adding or superimposing the 19.1 PSI and the 15.9 PSI. So that concludes this example. If you found this helpful, please hit like and subscribe.